Crazy people are everywhere, but what happens when they take on the role of police officers? Please do well, not ruin my career. Please, please, please. Here are three of the most shocking cases when fake cops realize they've been caught. Starting with 26-year-old Casey Williams, who, on April 8, 2021, had been waiting at an intersection with his car, flashing his red and blue lights to civilians. Not long after, Whitefall officers arrived on the scene to see what was going on. So, you're an actual Cleveland police officer? No, no, I'm not with Cleveland PD. I work for uh, Cleveland Watchmen. We're a security company that hires only off-duty police officers to do traffic control. For, uh, are you an off-duty police officer? Yeah. Yes. So, who are you with? Uh, Pickway Sheriff's Office. Pickway? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, so you're, you're out of... They do... Uh, Ohio, and you're here working in Franklin County in Whitehall as an off-duty police officer. No, I'm working as a security guard. So we do. No, you're a uniform marked as a police officer. You're working as a police officer right now with a car that has red and blue lights on it. Yeah. All so right. I've got, I've got some paperwork I can give to you from. Absolutely, that, and I'll need to get your you. information. Right. I've been asked yeah. to come up here by my deputy chief and get that. Okay. Casey told the cop he was an off-duty officer working a special duty detail for watchmen based in Cleveland. But because his story quickly showed gaps, saying he's a bodyguard but has a police uniform, the officer knew something was off. Are you full-time over in Pickway? Uh, I live in Pickway, so... Um, let's see. 74 to 105. So I left the sheriff's office there. I'm going to... Uh, I was full-time there. I left full-time. Uh, as a jail up there. Uh, so you're not even a police officer? Uh, currently, I'm, I'm, well, I'm starting a new commission with a, a village up in um, Richland County, so, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, but what I'm saying is you're not even a police officer. You're currently not a full-time or a part-time police officer anywhere. Reserve. Okay, where are you a reserve officer at? So, give me a second, I'll give you the name of the village because it got hooked up through the company here that I'm working with. So. Okay, so you have an ID from that village? Not with me, no. Not with you? No. So you don't have an ID, you don't have a badge. What's the badge you were displaying earlier? Sorry? What's the badge you were displaying earlier? What do you mean? Do you have a badge? Yes. What was that the badge old. you were displaying earlier? That's my old Pickway one. So you have a Pickway County badge, but you don't work for them? It's a previous one from there, yeah. All right. Yeah. You have that with you currently? Yeah, it's a flex badge. Can I see that, please? Yeah. At this point, it is clear that Casey is lying, and the officer confirms it with every question he asks, but he can't yet come to any conclusions. Some minutes later, other police officers arrived at the scene, and they were briefed about the situation. It is here we are notified that the badge Casey was wearing is actually made out of plastic. Here. Tell me what's wrong with it. It's plastic. Yeah. That's what he was displaying. And he's armed and everything. That would have taken his firearm. Not yet. See, this is who he works for, which is, he's in the military. Yeah, that's screen printed. He's in the military. He, the guy who owns his company is his uh, commanding officer. Some uh, sergeant, first sergeant, sounds like. All right. And they got hired through this company here, Airy Wyatt. Area wide protection. He says he used to work. It was AWP was on one of those trucks. Yeah, well, no, that's them. They're, they're separate. So they, so he says he now works for the village of Glenmont, Ohio. Hey, yeah, he used to work for Pickway County. I said, so you're currently not certified anywhere. And he goes, well, I'm a reserve officer. I said, give me an ID or a badge. He said, well, I don't have one because they're trying to get that to do it. So he's over there uh, with his boss. Who is a military officer? All this, all these people are related to the military. Casey. Cassidy, Casey Williams. Casey Williams. Oh yeah. yeah, he's over there. You know Casey? him? Yeah, he was fired from Pickaway. Oh, okay. Well, he's he's displaying their badge out here. That's a made badge. That's not our badge. Right. Yeah. yeah. We don't provide those, and we don't approve those. Well. Yeah. Another police officer shows up and confirms that Casey worked in Pickaway, but was fired. Little by little, things were starting to escalate for Casey. The police then confronted Casey with their findings, but when asked again if he was a commissioned police officer, he continued to avoid the question. Okay, so I can't get a hold of the chief from Richland Township, which is Glenmont. 
Um, it's Richland Township. Yeah. So it's it's a township police department no, or it's the it's village, a village? Village in Richland Township. Yeah. Okay. It's a village in Richland. But you have no but you have no ID from them. No, all right. No, no, and no. have you ever been sworn in by them? I've talked to the chief. No, no. So I'm asking you a direct asked. question. Have you, you been sworn in now, by this them? It's very important you answer this correctly because being a former police officer or someday a current police officer, you know if you lie in this situation, you go directly to jail. No, I'm not. So I'm going to put not, that right up. Listen, up. I'm not. So trying, if I'm you not. are telling me you are a police officer right now, is I'm, that what you're telling no. me? So no. you are not a commissioned police officer? I have spoke with the chief. That's not what I'm asking okay. you. I'm asking you one question. Are you a commissioned police officer through the state of Ohio? I have an OPUNA certificate. That's not what That's I'm asking. That's not what I'm asking I'm, you. I'm, I'm explaining to you. I have no, 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 you're not. You're not answering the question. You're avoiding the question. It's very simple. Are you a sworn police officer anywhere in the state that of Ohio with any department? Not currently. Okay. That's right. not the question. The, well, well, I'm, oh, not I'm, currently. I'm unsure. I'm unsure. I'm unsure. You can't be unsure. You can't be unsure. You would have to raise your hand square, okay. sign a form, and you would get I've talked to paperwork the on that. The police officers then put all the evidence against him together and concluded that he was actually an impersonator of a law enforcement officer. I found a good paying job, and I was told by the guys, like, hey, we'll take care of a commission. We'll get it taken care of. It's no big deal. I come out here. You know, I was told, hey, you can start. Make some money. That's all I was trying to do. Please do not. I'm... I'm asking you for courtesy, man to man. Please do well, not ruin my career. Please, please, please. I okay. think I think you did that kind of on your own, Casey. Please. All right. Casey finally realizes the extent of the situation and begs that they don't ruin his career. But there was no way the officers were going to let him off the hook. The Pickway County. You knew you didn't work for Pickway County. You displayed that badge. All right. You're out here acting in a law enforcement capacity, displaying a badge that you have no right to have, or a facsimile of a badge. That's not even a real badge. Yeah. You were aware of that, yeah, okay? It's, it's not real. Okay, so, all right, you're gonna be charged. Oh, seriously? I'm serious, okay? Now, we're gonna be nice about this, okay? And we're gonna take you over, and you can take your gun belt off, and you can set it on the hood of that car, okay? okay? Um, and we're gonna take you in. We will not, we don't have to handcuff you. This officer is gonna pat you down, all right? And we'll let you out, all right, on a summons, all right? After going slightly easy on Casey and confiscating everything he had on him, the police proceeded to search his car. They found more things that completely changed the gravity of the matter and their take on the case. All right. And it's loaded, right? Okay, we're not going to... The police officers found a rifle along with a deputy sheriff jacket in the trunk of Casey's cruiser. The officers wasted no time in putting Casey in handcuffs and under arrest. Listen, man, there's just way too much. You're, you've got a code in there that doesn't belong to you. That's got deputy sheriff stuff on there. you got a loaded rifle. You're a traffic guy, man. That's all your details going to be. What active shooter situation are you going into? That you need to carry a loaded rifle and rifle yeah, please. They're not. Listen, this is all because we're trying to look cool, whatever, I get it. Well, you're completely in the wrong, that's all I can tell you. Go ahead and put your foot in there. Casey faced felony charges and was accused of impersonating a police officer and improperly handling a firearm. But if you think Casey is the only one capable of using a badge and a gun and pretending to be law enforcement, that's because you don't know John Switzer. 67-year-old John Switzer, a so-called former NYPD officer, handcuffed his neighbor's wife on May 3, 2021, because they were supposedly playing loud music. Shortly after this incident, police officers arrived in response to a 911 call reporting the disturbance. You called my house, he locked my wife? What? You called my house, he locked my wife? Who? Okay, okay. Who is he? This guy. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. So that's all my hand right now. That's so hot. Ow! Yeah, they're not comfortable. Hold on, let me get them off. Ow! Ow! Oh, that's so hot. If you stop moving, I'll get them off. If you move, it's going to be harder. Thank you, so. I don't do anything. Why are you doing that to me? Relax. I'm going to talk to you in a minute. Okay. We start by seeing something pretty unusual. A Vietnamese woman handcuffed at the scene, but no police cars or any lights are visible. Do you guys know this guy? I don't know. Oh, He's so Can you stop yelling? Oh, thank you. He said, hey, the police. He said what? He said, hey, the police. 
Ik zal mij houden. Ik zei hier de is. Hier de officer. Ik zal mij houden. Hij lacht door mijn wife. Hij just walked in your house. Yes. Yeah. He walked in my house and he locked to my wife. He locked her. And he got a gun too. He got a gun too. I'm scared. Okay. What were you doing? Why would he do that? I don't know. We just sit here and he tells you my wife somehow. He locked my wife. Too many times already. Too many times already. Not one time. He signed with you know. He come to my house, locked to my wife. Are you guys Vietnamese? Yeah. We are Vietnamese here. Don't let me, we, we are still here. What's going on with him? I don't yeah. know. Yeah, 13 to 11. Too many times. Too many times. You see the music, that's too loud. Okay, that's the music. And he got the gun. That's the music. Hey, I'm going to have a deputy that speaks Vietnamese come that okay. way. This makes more okay. sense. Because I'm having a hard time following your broken English. I need right. you to help me, sir. Okay. Okay. The officer asked the family what had happened, but was having a hard time understanding what they were saying. Meanwhile, another police officer approached John, the so-called officer who handcuffed the woman, and questioned him about the situation. They started an uprising with the music, being very loud, very, very boisterous. I told them, I said, please turn it down. Uh, the guy right there in the jeans who was talking to the other officer, he, uh, he hit me, and and who, she who is was. Pardon me. Who was at the hit? The gentleman right there in front of the other light. The one that's lighting yeah. the cigarette. Um, okay. He hit me, and and she was being very belligerent, and I wanted to keep her away. I put her in cuffs. I'm a former officer up in New York, and I'm just upset with her. I so told you. Put handcuffs on somebody. Yes, I did. Because you were upset with her. Well, no, because I'm tired of the shit. Plus, he hit me. I know it's probably wrong. What did she have anything to do with that? She was getting in my face. John mentions how the neighbors were being loud and boisterous, and how the husband had hit him when he confronted them. He also mentions that he handcuffed the woman because she was all over his face. Later on, a chat with John revealed how he used to be on the New York police force before quitting. You like working the midnight shift? I've been working it for almost seven years. Really? So, yeah. How many years have you been, been on? Almost seven years. Really? Yeah, the, uh, I spent 25 in New York. What part of New York? Uh, actually inside the city, uh, the, uh, part of the 2-2, which is Central Park area. And, uh, and after 9-11, I had to go. A few minutes passed, and another police officer who spoke Vietnamese arrived at the scene and asked the woman to explain her side of the story. And her side of the story quite differs from John's. Yeah. À, cảm ơn thượng à, để như muốn giải thích uh, cái câu chuyện giúp uh, con thầy giải thích uh, câu okay. chuyện bữa nay bị gì tại sao từ, từ đầu tới cuối nha ok à, chị thì chị ở bên nhà của con bé bên kia tại đi làm về đó hàng sớm đó uh -huh. thì chị ngồi hai chị em nói chuyện với nhau chị ở đó hả không chị ở đây ở nhưng mà hàng xóm anh em ngồi ở đây thì ở đây nhưng ừ. mà chị là ok em út cứ đi làm về cực khổ ừ. thì nó mời qua ăn cơm thì chị không có ăn chị ngồi nói chuyện nó rồi chị thấy ông mở cửa ông, 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 ông à, cái ông đó đó ông mở cửa mà ông cầm cây súng dưới cây còng qua nữa chị thấy gì sợ quá ủa chuyện gì vậy cây súng nữa em ở đâu để à, à không ông cầm ông đi về nhà với lại cây còng Okay. thì ổng à, mắt một chồng của chị ra tại vì chồng của chị uống bia okay. khi mà chị chạy theo chị thấy chồng chị uống bia chị muốn ém đi cho bồ nên anh chị nói đấy đi cứ ngồi đó để em thấy ca okay. à, đợi đợi chút nha à, lúc mà chị xuống thấy màu gì vậy? à màu đen em đen, nhỏ hay lợi bự vậy à, hình như là nó cũng cỡ à, dài ba dai vậy okay. đợi dạ. chút nha nhưng mà nó nói là nó là cảnh sát uh -huh. nó muốn bắt ai Anytime nó được quyền bắt uh -huh. thì chị mới hỏi ổng chứ chị làm cái gì sai uh -huh. mà ổng đòi còng chị thì ổng nói một câu tại vì ổng là cảnh sát music của mày làm cho tao không có feel accountable uh -huh. rồi cái ổng nói mày put your hand out còng là ổng còng chị thì lúc đó thì ok ổng còng chị xíu quá chị đau chị không biết làm sao thằng chồng chị nó giận lắm chị nói đấy đi anh cứ ngồi im đó cho em ở Mỹ thì có luật pháp Ok em gọi điện thoại là nó lợi nó hép liền anh không cần ra tay Thì chồng chị thấy chị đau quá chị ghen thì Thì thằng chồng của chị thật sự có nói Lợi xô ổng đi ra khỏi pop ra tiền của chị Rồi ổng thấy vậy ổng mới nói ok come here ổng mở cộng ra cho chị Chị nói không 
mày đã làm rồi thì ok để tao muốn người khác đến đây để cho tao biết là mày đối xử với người Việt Nam của tao là như vậy. Hearing this verdict, one could start to think that maybe John wasn't being that honest when he said he was a police officer after all. Does she want to press charges against him? Explain, make sure she understands that what he did was illegal, that he is not an officer and he cannot do that, and does she want to press charges? Yes. Yes, you have to do the law. Okay. Yeah, you have to do the law, please. Okay. After this, the officer approached John and asked for further details on the incident. So when you first went over there, did you identify yourself as a law enforcement officer and have a badge and gun in your possession? That they you know that I am. That you are a law enforcement yes, officer? Yes, ma'am. Former law enforcement officer. Okay, there's a big difference. Well, yes, and yes, I agree. I so did you specifically say, I am a police officer? Not to them, no. Okay, did yeah, because you have a, I am not. Did you have a badge that you showed to them? No, I have not. Okay, did you have a gun in your hand that you were... No, ma'am, I have not. So you did not have a gun? No, ma'am, I have my cell phone. Okay. Okay, so you said you had your cell phone in your hand. Yes, ma'am. Did you ever think about dialing 911 to I, allow us the opportunity I, 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 to deal I, I, with this instead I was of... On, I was on the phone with uh, dispatch at the time. To get, you know. At the time that you placed her in handcuffs? No, at, at before. Okay, so that's what I'm asking you. Is if you had your cell phone in your hand and that's what you were holding, why not just call 911 instead of putting her in handcuffs it because was she fault. was being boisterous? My bad. I, I agree. I, I, could have, I could have used the situation better. Having heard enough incriminating facts, the police officers and John know he was in the wrong. The officers immediately arrested John before he was put in the back seat of their car. Then the truth is revealed. And the badge that you have on the holster right by the door that says Florida Investigator Sergeant, where did that come from? I was from? a private investigator at one time. A Down private here. investigator. Yeah. Okay. But not law enforcement. No. Okay. John was never a police officer, and he was just pretending to be one all of this time. John was evidently charged with impersonating a police officer and unlawfully handcuffing a civilian. Other than John is a man called Omar Ford, whose supposed good intentions took a really unlucky turn. 43-year-old Omar Ford, on March 29, 2020, pulled over an off-duty Orlando police officer for what he perceived to be erratic driving. Little did he know, this was going to be one of the worst decisions he'd ever make. A Castleberry police officer was immediately called to the scene by the off-duty officer, Zachary Price, knowing something wasn't right. But did he have all his lights on? Yeah, all of them. The front and everything. And then he had a siren on too. And I could hear it because I had the top gun. It's like, wee, 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 wee. And he's like changing between the siren tones. And he's like right on my ass. And I'm like, is this guy trying to pull me over? Because he has white lights. And then I'm like, I don't know what he's doing. And then he goes, um, pulls up next to me with his window down, his lights still on. He goes, he just saw the down when you're passing me and I'm like are you pulling me over and he goes you just need to slow down right now and I'm like so I stopped and I'm like okay like are you trying to pull me over so then I just called 911 I'm like hey but when Omar was asked what had happened he gave a different story hey what's up man how you doing what's going on where are you security at I work over in Winter Park at Central Place uh -huh. I went to the Wawa and while I'm coming going home the gentleman flew past me and his car danced so I thought he might have been intoxicated. I didn't want him to hurt himself. So I blew my horn and I flashed the light and I put my speaker up and I pulled next to him and said, hey, slow down, you're gonna hurt yourself. And then I kept on driving and he looked like he was gonna follow, he started following me. So I made a U-turn. I think he may have got in road rage or something. I'm like, I don't want to get into any altercation. I just didn't want to hurt himself. I made the U-turn. And then he kept on following me. So I came here to make another U-turn. And then when I seen him, he was behind me. I said, well, maybe something is wrong because he, he kept following me. I said, well, maybe something's wrong. Let me get out and find out. I said, hey, when I got out, he said, oh, stay, stay in your vehicle. So I said, well, I don't know what the heck is going on at this point. I just didn't want him to get into an accident because, you know, it was doing pretty, you know, pretty fast and he 
car kind of did a little fishtail on I just didn't want to get hurt, that's what I was about. Omar gives his side of the story that slightly differs from that of Officer Zachary, and here we find out that he's actually a security guard, not a police officer. However, officials explained that what he did was wrong, and that he could be mistaken for being an actual police officer. The issue we have here is, you're dressed as law enforcement, you're in a vehicle that's outfitted as law enforcement, so therefore, somebody's gonna mistake you as law enforcement when you're not but law enforcement. But I never got out the vehicle. Okay, but usually when a uh, concerned citizen sees mm -hmm. somebody that they believe to be impaired, mm -hmm. they call us. But I was they on, don't I was flash actually, lights. I was on the phone at the same time. So what, what lights did you flash? I have my takedowns. So you flashed your takedowns? Yeah. Out. I thought it was an issue if you like pulled someone over and got out and you know went through the whole thing. I didn't know. No, you're taking you're taking lawful action. To sit there and try to stop the vehicle. But I didn't want to stop him. I didn't try to, to stop him. To let him know, to notify him, to yeah, do whatever okay. you're trying to do. Well, I didn't know that. I thought, you know, as a concern, you're taking this as a concern for somebody. Right, but if you were a concerned citizen, mm -hmm. you should call the police. You're not well, supposed I, to take well, your, your security. I got on the, got on the phone. But again, you're, you're not supposed to take security action on the road. That's where you're wrong. Okay. Ford insists that he was not trying to impersonate a police officer but he's informed that if he were to stop a regular person, they might easily think he's an actual cop because of how his vehicle and uniform look. When a detective arrived at the scene, he and one of the officials discussed whether Omar should be filed or not. What do you think, detective? The instructions aren't very helpful. No, but he took action based off of hitting the lights, the siren, and the PA. Or... It's, a, it's a shame he wasn't getting him to pull over. That would have made it more cut and dry. Yeah. He was just saying pull over. I think we can file on this. Probably. And he never got out and like presented himself. Sorry, no badge. As uh, you know, he just threw his vehicle's actions. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, you certainly can still file it. Yeah, we'll file it. The real officers decide to file Omar with impersonation. Although Omar didn't say pull over or present himself as a police officer, he performed all the vehicle actions of an actual police officer, this being enough for the officers to charge him. First, you're suspended for three years. Apparently, you got seven suspensions. Can't, what? You, you can't be driving, man. I'll just park so, the car. Well, I mean, we can't. I mean, this has got a lot of stuff in it. I don't want somebody getting into this car. Oh, so we need to pull it into the neighborhood right there and park it? Well, that'd be the worst place to park it. Well, I live, inside of a neighborhood. I live like three lights down. I mean, it again, it's... It's on you what you want to do with this vehicle, but I highly suggest against it. I would prefer mm -hmm. you call somebody at home that's got a license and y'all take this vehicle to the house. I could do that too. That's the first issue. All right. Second issue, under Florida statute, this is textbook impersonating law enforcement officer. All right. I, I was not trying to... Listen. Mm -hmm. All right. I understand what you're saying. By the way this helpful. vehicle looks, by mm -hmm. the way you're dressed with the insignia... Well, this is the company's uniform. Okay, I understand that, mm -hmm. but when you try to pull over a citizen mm -hmm. you know a citizen would mis mistake this all day for a law enforcement officer but this looks exactly out I didn't get out okay. or anything okay but you still on your way from home from mm -hmm. work you, you hit your strobes according to him you hit your siren and you cycle through two different sirens all right that's you can't do that you're not allowed to impersonate or to you know pull, try to do your own traffic stop Oh, okay. A regular citizen okay. mm -hmm. would call us immediately. And we get these calls all the time mm -hmm. about a vehicle they suspect to be in the UI. And we come out, we get behind the vehicle, and because we've been to the schools, we can pick up cues mm -hmm. that would give us probable cause to pull that vehicle over. So before we can even hit our lights, mm -hmm. we have to have probable cause. And we're trained to detect probable cause and determine what probable cause is. You're not. Mm -hmm. But you hit your strobes, and according to him, you hit a siren. All right, He thought you were LEO. So, I mean, you're not, you're not going to be arrested, but there is going to be charges filed on you. All right, and they're going to go to the state attorney, and the state attorney is going to determine what they're going to do from there. All right, mm -hmm. but, I mean, you could be arrested on two, two separate things tonight. Okay. For one, driving while your license is invalid, mm -hmm. and impersonating LEO. Okay. All right, I'm not going to arrest you, but you, we're going to you know, document the incident, and we're mm -hmm. going to send it up to the state attorney to let them determine. The officer tells Omar that he's not going to be arrested, but he is going to be charged and could be arrested for driving without a valid license and for impersonating a police officer.
He was then told to call someone to come pick up his car from the road. You want to get on the phone and get somebody down here? We can get this you know, vehicle off the road and not park in a neighborhood where it's going to get burglarized. I think I'm that's not, the best course of action. Well, I mean, I, I'm a cop in Castleberry. This is the city of Castleberry, so I know we... try to burglarize this? Hey, I'm telling you, man. What? Ford was booked into the county jail on September 8, 2020, but later released after posting a $2,000 bond. If you enjoyed this video, watch this one, and don't forget to subscribe. Goodbye.